Hi everyone, my name's Alex and welcome back to another video. And this video is going to be about how to do medicine online. So first of all, just a couple of things to get out of the way. First thing, uh, neighbours' kids are being really noisy, so I apologise if you hear that in this video. And secondly, um, this advice will vary significantly depending on what medical school you're at. Because um, obviously some medical schools will be, will be having some in-person teaching, some will have none at all, um, and some will be on placement, and you, you get the picture. So it's really going to vary with between medical schools. So let's crack on with the first point straight away, which is to front load the work at the start of the week. You should front load the work at the start. So, um, for example, if you've got lectures on um, maybe a Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, um, and you've got some free time on Monday, try and get as much done at the start of the week as you can. Because learning at home all the time can get super draining, especially after a while, and, and towards the end of the day, and t especially towards the end of the week. And you might find it difficult to pay attention to online lectures and focus if you're doing the lectures sort of at five o'clock in the evening on a Thursday or Friday. So yeah, try and get through the content as soon as possible. And this also means that if you've been through the content before a live lecture is delivered uh, online, then um, you'll already sort of know it, and you'll already have got through the understanding of it, and then if you need to, you've got that uh, live lecture there which you can ask questions in if you need to. So for example, we have lectures on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, but last week I thought I should probably get some lectures done on the Monday, because I knew I was going to be pretty tired and drained by the end of the week so I got a few lectures done on Monday and it really took the load off and allowed me to enjoy the rest of the week more um, rather than have to stress about the work. So my second point is to be really interactive. So you're never going to be able to focus and study well if you're just on your own in your room writing notes all day from the lecture for eight hours a day. So try and make what you're doing interactive by writing questions, going through clinical scenarios and working problems through with your friends, obviously socially, socially distanced um, or on Zoom or online or something. Um, you'll learn this a lot better and you'll probably find that you don't get as bored so quickly if you're doing things that have, actually have to make you actively think rather than just sort of passively writing notes. And you'll certainly be able to concentrate a lot better. So there's lots of different resources available online. So you can just do questions from like past test or past med, find some clinical cases online, um, and there's lots of different textbooks with clinical cases in as well. I'll link some resources below if you're stuck for this sort of thing. Um, but yeah, try and make your studying as interactive as you can. My third point is to get outside and be active outside. So studying inside on your own all day is gonna be boring as hell and it will just drag you down and you will not be able to concentrate. Also, I, don't, I know it doesn't sound like much, but you haven't, haven't actually got the exercise of having to walk between lectures or um, between seminars and that sort of thing. So even just getting up and just walking about or just even just getting up and walking to the shops um, will really help to pick you up and give you that new boost of energy for when you come back and you want to start studying again. So try and do at least one piece of outdoor exercise a day. So whether that's like a COVID secure um, sports team or um, going for a bike ride, a run, a walk. It will really help you to stay positive and uh, the fresh air and the vitamin D will do your world of good. Um, and obviously vitamin D has been linked to um, less severe outcomes in COVID. So that's always a bonus. You also might find you're stepping on the toes of the people you live with. Um, this isn't something I've experienced personally, but I know other people have. And um, I guess getting out and doing some exercise is just a bit of time away and you can come back and uh, start afresh again. I've mentioned in a previous video that I will link up there, up there, um, about how, uh, how good exercise is for your concentration and your memory. So it's not just beneficial while we're learning all online and off campus, um, it's beneficial for all, the, all types of learning as well. So yeah, if you want to check that out, I'll link it in the description as well. So my fourth point is to be selective about what lectures you go through or go to and what lectures you don't. So I'm obviously not saying just skip all your lectures. So some live lectures will be really important that you attend and some of them you'll probably find less useful and your time will be better spent either self-studying or studying with your friends. So I definitely recommend going to all of the clinical based ones. So um, anything with sort of clinical relevance and how to like the diagnostic ones and um, sort of examinations and that sort of thing. Um, I definitely recommend going to those, but some of the more contenty ones 
um, like the physiology and that sort of thing, I might you might find it's better and you learn better going through it in your own time rather than just going to the lecture. So not turning up to lectures is not a reflection of you being a poor student or being lazy. Uh, I think it's just a it shows you know how best to use your time and you know how you learn better yourself. So this, obviously this is going to be subjective and choose the ones you want to go to or want to miss wisely. I'd also remember as well that if you go through the content before the lecture is delivered, as I mentioned in the first point, then if you n feel like you understand the content well, then you can get away with not going to that lecture. But if you feel like you don't, then you can and you can ask questions and uh, asking questions will make it more interactive and you'll probably learn the content better as well. And my fifth and final point is to know when to stop. So when you're studying at home, it's very easy to just do nothing all day and just not really study. Um, but it's also very easy to go over the top and do too much. So with that being said, make sure you leave plenty of time to do things you enjoy. Make sure you leave time to do exercise, as I said, to see your friends and do any other hobbies you might enjoy. It can be difficult when the place that you relax is the same place as the place that you work, because then these two polar opposite parts of your life are sort of mingled all together. And it can be become quite stressful and difficult to know when to stop and when to start work again. Um, so if you've got somewhere else to work that's not your room then great but um, yeah make sure you know when to stop and especially with med um, there's an endless amount of information out there that you can know but you don't need to and it's impossible, almost impossible to know all of it. So yeah just relax make sure you're doing the work obviously but don't overdo it because the studying will start to eat into the rest of your life. So yeah, that's been it. Um, thanks very much for watching. If you have any other tips or ideas of how to study medicine from home, um, then please leave them in the comments down below. Or if you have any more course specific questions about UEA or, um, or medicine in the UK in general, then you can leave them in the comments below or you can message me on Instagram. Yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.